Hello guys and welcome to yet another in-depth review here on NFT Auto Reviews. Today we'll be reviewing something a little bit different and in fact it is a pre-owned car. Usually I only do brand new cars but this one is pretty special in the fact that it is my own personal car. And it is of course a 2015 Chevy Cruze LTZ. Now I did buy this car pre-owned just a few months ago at the end of summer. I've been really having a good time with the car. I got the wheels to spin a few times. It's a pretty fun little car around the city. Could use a little bit more power, but that's all right. Um, but I did clean the car up really nice and shiny for your guys' viewing pleasure. And I do not have the window sticker, unfortunately. The car did not come with it when I got it. Um, but our sort of normal stuff we go over when we're on the side, it does come in 10 different color options back in 2015 when it was new. This particular one is either the Berlin Blue Metallic, or I've heard it called the Blue Ray Metallic. I'm not quite sure which one it is. I've, I've heard it called both, but... And the wheelbase stands at a rather smaller 105.9 inches. And coming around rear to the 2015 Cruze, as you'd expect, front-wheel drive is standard like almost all of the uh, cars in this segment. Alrighty, so we can go ahead and get into the nitty gritty here up on the front, starting with our headlamps. Now our headlamps are one bulb used for both your high and low beams, and it is a reflector halogen bulb. You have your turn signals up there as well, and then also down here added for the 2015 model year. It's a nice little update, we got that nice LED strip for the daytime running lights, and we also have projector fog lamps, which is pretty nice. I specifically chose this car because I like the redesign for 2015. Gives you a lot of nice chrome elements up front as well as that nice LED uh, uh, light there. So pretty good looking front end in my eyes. So looking beyond the reflections there on the tree, I just waxed the car today, but it might be a little bit hard to see the creases in the center of the hood. Pretty good looking, then we have some pretty neat shapes. Let's see how it dished out that hood is right there over there but taking a look down here we have these pretty nice 18 inch painted alloy wheels and our tires measure 225 45 we have ventilated disc brakes up front really good looking wheels and I really like the way these came out the metallic flake really came out on those wheels after I waxed them so it's really important to keep your car clean, to me at least. We have our RS badging down here. And then our RS package gives us these little side extensions and as well as a little, little bit of a more sporty front and rear bumper. And our mirror here is a combination of body colored and plastic. And it does fold in and is heated as well. And below the windows is chrome, and we have the regular flat black over here for our B pillars. And that does really help out with the uh, fingerprints and whatnot. Also have our sunroof up here, and then the antenna is up there. Nice door handles. I really like the use of chrome and body color. We do have the smart key entry system. And that was a big selling point for me, at least. I was also shown a 2LT cruise which is almost like this one just had less uh, of the keyless access features but that's mainly the reason why I chose this car over a 2LT is because of that smart key entry and it's really helpful when you have things in your hands also the back door handles do also have it see that button right there and taking a look around back the RS package also does give you rear disc brakes the uh, regular cruises do have drums, however they work perfectly fine for a smaller car like this. Pretty good looking car when you wrap around to the rear in my opinion. Have some pretty neat traditional tan lamps back here. You also have some cruise, uh, or some chrome lettering action, uh, rather. We also have that little spoiler that's part of the RS package. A little chrome strip and then we have our backup camera and there's also a trunk release underneath there. And there's also your LTZ badging. And the rear bumper of the RS 
uh, cruise actually comes down a little bit lower so it kind of blocks off the uh, exhaust which doesn't look that great but it is hidden underneath there all right so now let's go ahead and check out what powers my 2015 cruise Alrighty, so popping the hood on the 2015 LTZ Cruise. The hood is held up by a prop and it lays down right over here. The underneath of the hood is lined in a sound detonating material, which is pretty nice. But as far as our engine goes, it is a 1.4 liter inline four turbocharged. Horsepower comes in at 138 horsepower at 4,900 RPM, which is actually pretty low. And 148 pound-feet of torque at only 1,850 RPM. And the turbo is somewhere down there nestled in with the heat shields and all that good stuff where the exhaust is. And I have to say, driving this car for the past couple of months, it's a very down-low engine. It doesn't like the higher RPMs at home at the lower RPMs. So we have the air filter and whatnot over here and then we also have the oil dipstick. It takes 530 oil which is always good. Nice to have a thicker oil. I also have the battery over here and I'm assuming this uh, big battery hold is for the diesel cruise. There's also a diesel option for the cruise which is pretty neat. And we also have our regular fluids that we could check and whatnot. Still a relatively easy engine to work on. Alrighty, so before we get into the interior, let's go ahead and check out how the smart key entry system works here. Now we do have the regular traditional lock on there, which helps if your battery in the key dies. But how it does work is just make sure you have the key within within a proximity of the car. The car is unlocked at the moment, but if you want to get back in, or if you want to lock the car rather, just press the button. It'll lock all four doors, but if you want to get back in, press the button. It'll unlock the driver's door only, and if you want to press it again, It'll unlock all four doors. Alright, so as I understand for the LTZ, there are three um, leather color options. This one, of course, is being the regular black. There's also a sort of uh, brown and tan leather, and then there's just a straight brown uh, interior as well. But here we have the regular boring black. But it does get it does keep nice and clean so i do like that now as far as materials up here it's pretty soft to the touch up here and we have this nice cloth material down here right over here is pretty soft to the touch could be softer though and down here is completely hard to the touch over here we have some buttons for our lock unlock we also have a child lock for the uh, windows uh, all the windows are are automatic down, however the drivers is automatic up and down. We also have our full power and rear controls right over there controlled with the joystick. You just pick a side and then you can move it all around. Also chrome door handle, bottle holder down below and a little bit of storage. And this one does have the upgraded uh, 9 speaker Pioneer audio system. Pretty decent sound. Uh, the bass could be a little better but it's a really good sound system for a smaller car like this. Not, definitely a nice upgrade over the uh, traditional six speaker that the other trim levels get. Now as far as the seats goes, pretty nice attention to detail on the seats. We have some uh, contrast color stitching. And I don't believe it's real leather, but it's got a pretty neat grain to it towards the center there. And it is six way powered, so up down in both the front and the back and then back and forth for the seat and then also your backrest is controlled right here with that little lever there. Over here we can see a better picture of the tilt and telescoping uh, handle right here so we just flip that down and then we can pick the steering wheel up or down and uh, in and out. And to the left of the dash we have a little air vent there, all of our lighting controls with the exception of our, of our uh, high beams are over there and we also have a gauge dimmer. 
And down below we have the hood release and our two pedals over there. And it's very nice that this uh, mat buttons in so it doesn't move around on you. I do wish that all the other mats would do that, but just the driver gets that feature. Alright, so let's go ahead and hop in, start it up, and check out the rest of the features on the interior of this car. Alrighty, so here's the key fob that Chevy gives you with the cruise. I know they still do use it on a few products, including the Impala that I just reviewed. So if you want to see a video on the uh, 2018 Impala, which is a really nice car, go ahead and check that my channel. It's going to be on there for you. But it's a pretty nice key design. We have a bunch of useful buttons on the back. We have an unlock, lock, trunk release, a remote start, which is very helpful in these cold Connecticut winters. We also have the panic alarm, and then we also have a key if you need to use that. However, this does have the push button ignition. All you need to do is put your foot on the brake and press the button to go. Alrighty, so we do have a leather wrapped steering wheel, however I do have to say it's pretty hard, so it's not the most comfortable steering wheel, but it does have that nice leather texture to it. It has some of the stitching on the inside of the wheel as well, and some pretty cool functions. I have our normal cruise control over here, which is pretty intuitive there. And we also have some nice um, plastic accents over here on the steering wheel, going across the airbag cover as well. And Chevy did use this steering wheel for quite a few of their products uh, back then, I guess you could say. Now over here we have a bunch of controls for your Bluetooth, all that good stuff. So we have volume up and down for your radio. We have a, a switching between your presets and then switching between the sources. We also have our Bluetooth controls, voice commands, and then a mute button and a hang up for the... Um, for the Bluetooth there. And then if you look behind the steering wheel, we have our turn signals, as well as our menu button for the little screen up there, and then also our high beams. And up here, we do have our windshield wipers, of course. And over here, we have some our, our traditional gauges. Pretty nice, nice styling with the chrome going around the gauges and whatnot. So we have our traditional big uh, gauges are our RPM gauge and then our speed. We also have a temperature gauge and a fuel gauge over there. I really like the screen that you get in this car. Now I'm just going to go through some of the features here. And we can start off with that digital speedometer. Now it's always going to say what gear you're in down here. Your mileage, obviously this one has 43, just almost 44,000 miles. And you also have a compass right down there and then your different options over there. So pressing the menu button right here reveals different screens as you can see. I have to get my tire pressure monitor checked up front there as you can see. Uh, pressing it again gives you just uh, your different um, menus there. But then you can also turn the knob like so. It'll show you all your different trips and whatnot. A timer, navigation if this car was equipped with it. You also have, this is my favorite screen, it kind of shows you a digital speedometer, your fuel range and then your instant mpg down here we have our different trips and just a blank screen we also have our remaining oil life a battery voltage all of that good stuff but i do like to keep it on this screen right here this gives you it seems to give you the most useful information in my opinion taking a look up here a pretty nice dash it's all uh, hard to the touch 
We do have a center speaker up there, though, which is pretty cool. And taking a look down here, we do have the uh, 7 inch, I believe, MyLink display, and it is the previous generation MyLink. I have no problem with it whatsoever. I don't think that it's really outdated or anything like that, but it is a pretty nice screen. It's nice and clear, too. So we can go ahead and take a look at our audio screen. So we have all of our presets down below, which is pretty nice. You can also pretty much control the whole screen with this little uh, knob right here, if you were to be on the on the menu screen, there, like so. We also have the phone screen, which all of your contacts will sync over. You can also enter your phone numbers, all that good stuff. Of our, all of our different sources, so AM, FM, XM, all that good stuff. Click the next. We also have our Bluetooth radio, which I like to use often. Our tone, so what we want our audio to sound like. We also have configuration, which is just a whole bunch of options that you can customize. It's very customizable. Alright, so yeah, just a little rundown of our MyLink screen here. We also have weather, movies, and fuel via the XM, which I do not have, unfortunately. We also have quick information. And also our pictures that we could upload from our phone. But that pretty much does it for the screen up there. Now, I like how it has the exterior temperature right there any time. We also have these little squares up there which shows you what's working right now. So I have the Bluetooth connected from my phone. If you were to be making calls, uh, that um, button, that phone screen would show up. And you also have a mute and all that good stuff up there too. Alrighty, so right below the screen we have all of our physical preset buttons over here. We also have some controls for our radio as well. Now this dial would have a lot more functions if this car was equipped with a navigation, but unfortunately that's pretty much one of the only options this car doesn't have besides the rear parking sensors. And we also have some quick uh, buttons over here as well, as well as down here. So our volume knob is right over here as well as the on and off for the display. And if you turn it off it's got a nice little uh, display there, which is pretty neat. So our tune knob, which is also used for our using the touch screen if you don't want to actually touch it. We also have a CD player. I kind of like this finish for the dash there. I don't think it's real aluminum, but it kind of simulates a real uh, aluminum sort of texture. We have a trunk release over here, a hazards right over there. Passenger airbag information, and we also have our heated seat controls for both the passenger and driver. This is also our temperature, so if we turn that up, it'll turn the temperature up. It's actually a single zone climate control, but it is automatic. And our fan speed is located right over here on this dial. So front and rear defrosters are located over here. We can just turn the climate control on and off with that button right there. And then our mode is our where we want the air to blow. And that's really the only gripe I have about this car is you have to keep pressing the mode button to get the correct uh, place that you want the, the air to blow. So here's the uh, AC button and you also have recycling. And I believe this button would be for the uh, parking sensors on and off if we had that option. Now over here we have a little storage tray which I like to put my pieces of gum in there. So I'm ready for the day. And we also have our gear selector over here. Now it's a little bit scratch was this minor complaint I have about the car. But that's not the car's fault. It is a 6-speed automatic transmission. Now, as I understand, you can get a 6-speed manual in select models. I'm not quite sure if you could get it in the LTZ, but I'm sure you could get it in other trims. Now, we're in park at the moment, but if we want to shift it into a different gear, we just click that little unlock lever at the back, and this brings us into reverse. We do have guidance lines, which is pretty cool. As you turn the steering wheel, the guidance lines turn. You can also turn those guidance lines off if you're if they're bothering you. 
we have neutral and drive, and then we also have the uh, manual mode if we tilt it over. And taking a look at our little screen over there, M1 shows that we're in first gear. We also have our traction control um, button right there, and I found out that there's two stages to the traction control. You can either just turn it off like so, that light appears, or you can hold it down for five seconds. Maybe a little bit more than five seconds. And there's two lights that appear. So I'm not quite sure what the second stage to the traction control turns off. But um, nonetheless, I was pretty pretty surprised that there's two levels to the traction control there. Now if we take a look down here, there's a little 12 volt power outlet with a little storage tray over there. There's two cup holders and our typical uh, manual parking brake. I like the parking brakes up here instead of on the floor. And I li like it even better than the electronic parking brakes. Now over here we have our um, storage console. It's pretty small, but it's pretty soft. You can slide it back and forth, which is pretty nice. And if we lift it up, we find a little bit of storage with an auxiliary inlet and a USB inlet as well. And if we take a look up here, we have our auto dimming rear view mirror with the OnStar and SOS controls. Up here we have some nice reading lights and then we have an all on so that turns on the rear lights and the front lights, which is pretty neat. We also have our sun visor up here with the mirror and lights, nice bright lights and then our uh, handle over here. And here's our sunroof, which is pretty nice, I like to keep that open on the nice days. It has a shade that covers 100% of the light but we do have two switches that controls it. This one right over here. We'll vent it upwards. And then this one over here will control it going back and forth. Now over here we find our wind deflector, which is a huge help with the buffeting from the sunroof. And closing the sunroof, it is all a one touch system, so you don't have to keep your finger there while it closes, which is always a nice feature. But let me go ahead and fix my uh, seat to the normal driving position that I'm at uh, all the time. And let's go ahead and check out the uh, rear cabin. Let's go ahead and shut it off and save myself some gas. And grab the key so I don't lock myself out. And let's go ahead and check it out. Now taking a look at the rear doors, there is a little bit of lacking quality, like for example up here, it's all hard touch, even down here where your arm rests, is, that's hard touch as well. But how often do you have people in your back seats though? Unless you're using this car as a family car. Now we do have our window control over here, a chrome door handle. We even have a speaker back here on the door and a little bit of storage. Nice seats back here too with the stitching. Alright, so let's go ahead and get in and see how much room we have back here. Pretty decent amount of space. I'd say I have a couple inches of leg room. Uh, lateral room is also pretty good. I feel like I'm not cramped back here too bad. There's a little bit of a dry train hump, but if we move on over to the center seat, I still have plenty of room. I still have maybe about an inch or so of head space. And if I straddle that hump, it's not too bad. Now also down here we do have a 12 volt power outlet for charging your devices. And sliding on over to the actual seat here, we also do have an armrest that folds down with a couple of cup holders. It's really nice and soft too. But next let's go ahead and check out the front passenger space. So the front passenger door is much like the driver's, it's pretty much the same materials as well. So you have that chrome door handle, the window switch, 
and the addition of the lock on lock buttons. You have a little bit of storage, a Pioneer speaker again. Now the passenger seat is six way adjusting, but however it is manual. So the back and forth lever is located right over here. You also have a height adjustment right over here. And then your backrest is controlled with this lever way back here. Now these seats are relatively com com comfortable rather on a long trip. So when I have my films all the way out in Hartford, which is about half an hour to 45 minutes away, depending on traffic, it is a pretty comfortable car to spend my time in. Let's go ahead and hop in and check out what's in the glove box here. Opening the glove box, you, have to, you actually have a pretty good amount of space in here. You can see my sunglasses. We also have our owner's manual, all that good stuff in here. However, the one thing I really do wish I had was the window sticker. But nonetheless, pretty nice interior for this car. But let's go ahead and check out what lies underneath the trunk next. Alrighty, so you can open the trunk three different ways as you saw in the video, but we're going to go ahead and press the button, press and hold the button on the key fob there just to show you how much the uh, trunk actually opens. So it opens to about this height, which is a perfectly good height to uh, just lift it right on up easily in case you have bags or whatnot in your hand. Now pretty nice back here, it does have a little light, you can see the two Pioneer speakers back there for the sort of more basic bass speakers. They also have a grocery bag holder and keep in mind that these two seats do fold down uh, to give you extra cargo space, but we do have right around 15 uh, cubic feet of space underneath here. Now we have our spare tire over here and a little bit of a tool kit back there. As you can see our ice scrapers back there too. I am ready for the Connecticut winter here. So that's pretty much it for the trunk. It does of course have that emergency release and then a little handle right here. You can just grab and pull right on down. Now the fuel door is on the passenger side and we can just go ahead and press it and open it up. It is 15.6 gallons and according to the uh, claimed numbers you do get 26 in the city and 38 miles to the gallon on the highway which is not too bad. And you have that typical cap and tether system and you can hang the tether right there so it doesn't scratch your paint. So that pretty much concludes the video of the tour on my own personal car, which is the 2015 Chevy Cruze LTZ, and I hope you catch us for the next in-depth review.